guys. So there was a recent increase in prices of booster packs at Walmart as well as your local game store. And the increase was, it was speculated it was 5 to 10%, but now I believe it's 2%. So a 2% increase in boost. So back when I used to play, booster packs were about $2.99, I believe, in Invasion. Our Urza Saga definitely was $9.99 was you got this like deck and it had like I, I missed those actually. I forget what it was called. It was called a tournament pack. That's what it was called. Essentially it had three different booster packs in it, but the rares were together and then the uncommons were together and then you got some land as well, I believe. And that was only $9.99, um, so it was kind of like a super booster pack, which consisted of three different booster packs. So yeah, but booster packs used to be $2.99, I know, and uh, Weather Light and all those older sets. Uh, and, and Alliance, I can tell you, I just vaguely remember Alliance was always like $1.49, because <laughs> they had stickers. <laughs> like instead of um, having packs, like, you know, having like a sticker in the box, for just Alliance, Wizards of the Coast, back when they ran their own store, store, and I believe it was before Hasbro purchased them, so they had stores were completely owned by Wizards of the Coast, and they were selling like Monopoly and and board games, and obviously Magic. They were carrying Magic as well as Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon, I believe. They had all of these packs, and no, normally you just put like a sticker on you know front of the box. Uh, saying how much the pack was, but they would like put a stick of 149 on each Alliance pack because Alliance was a very poor selling set. Like I just remember there was so much of it. I kind of wish like I had kept some of that, but obviously there's a lot of magic cards you kind of wish, or a lot of magic packs you kind of wish that you kept or you purchased a little bit more uh, back then. So what has happened with time has magic packs have just become more and more expensive. And the question is why? Uh, I mean, now we have a pack that is $9.99. I mean, if you told me we would have a pack that was $10, I would not have believed you uh, when I was a little kid because uh, you are used to, Radio Sack actually sold a ton of packs when I was, uh, I remember buying packs from them because they used to have these really good deals, two for five or uh, four for ten, and they were tremendously good deals. And even the local uh, grocery stores would have a case of magic in it. So I, I mean, pretty much it was like every place you can imagine had magic cards, and they were always, you know, two dollars a pack, two ninety nine a pack at most. And it was because they were very heavily discounted. So I believe MSRP was three dollars and twenty nine cents during that time. But they were always like less than that because people, they wanted to sell these packs out. Especially the Mikadian Mask, that set was awful. I mean that set was so bad that like you couldn't, even at $1.99 a pack, people were not going to buy that card, um, buy that uh, pack. And so you had this issue with uh, increasing in price. So the reason it's increasing in price is because people like me, who when I was smaller, I had an allowance, I had to mow lawn, I worked, as soon as I turned 16, I had a job, and I've had a job, even in like grad school and college and stuff, I've had a job since I was 16. So, I've done taxes since then. And I can tell you, when you have a job, and you're 16 years old, you have other things that you have to worry about, like the Abercrombie t-shirts and like fitting in and buying like, you know, car, having a car, paying your auto insurance, <laughs> like um, any problem with a car is just, when you're a kid, wow, like it just empties your bank account and then, and then you f refill it and then it empties it again. Like that's at least my personal experience with uh, being younger. And you know, fancy football draft. Well, I guess so many different expenses I can think of that I spent in high school. And so, when you have money, you don't have that much of it of disposable income. You can buy magic cards for. So, people in my generation, so that was pretty much everybody was you know a student, or if they had a little bit more money. A uh, geek culture is not what it is today. So, if you were 22, you probably were not at that time. There were a lot less. 25, 28, 29, 
30 years old, 40 year old people interested in magic. Um, on the flip side, you never had anything called MTG Finance. You would get a magazine once a month just once a month, that's when price is updated. And most people didn't even have the magazine because you had to pay money for the magazine, right? And that's another concept I never got there. If you're really good at MTG Finance, then why are you paying money to get like information um, that's already out there? Uh, so then you beat. But anyway, that's another totally different video. And uh, so what happens is you have people who now have jobs that pay more, who now have more disposable income, and they're buying these cards they couldn't buy when they were, were smaller. And why would they buy this? Maybe, you know, I have very fond memories of Beta. Um, I, although I only opened one booster pack, I just remember like that was a really awesome moment when I opened it. So would I be, if, a pack of that nature came on the market and I could afford it, I actually would buy it just to open it. And if I got a Dragon Whelp and I didn't make my money back, I would still be so happy because it would just bring so much, um, it would just be amazing to me. But now you have a lot of people like me with you know, more disposable income than they had when they were 16 years old or 17 or, you know, especially when I was in elementary school playing Magic. You don't I mean it took me four weeks to save up my allowance to buy the Pokemon movie. I feel or was it a Pokemon? Whatever. It took me forever to save up money. Oh, the Pokemon game. That's what it was. It took me forever to save up for Pokemon Blue. Uh, and now you're dealing with people from MTG Finance putting money into the game as investments, and they truly believe. I was reading a Facebook post where a guy was like. Hey, I want to make, I want to drive a six-figure car and live in a seven-figure house by doing MTG Finance. And this was an honest to legitimate guy who believed that he could do it. And that's MTG Finance for you in a nutshell. So it's driving prices up uh, because you have all this money flooding in, uh, regardless of why it's coming into the game. Is it coming in because players like me really love that Dragon Whelp and having that opportunity to pull another you know, black border Dragon Whelp? Uh, yes, that's you have collectors who are not speculators. Again, I have said this a million times, and I'll continue to uh, say this. But you, then you have MTG Finance, you have all these people interested in making Magic the Gathering, Magic the Investing. And that's why, you know, packs will continue to increase in price. You're going to get $10 packs. Tomorrow we could get $20 packs. We could get $25 packs. I mean, Wizard of the Coast is making so much money from this and they know they can make a lot of money from it. So it, for their business model, I'm surprised they didn't make a $10 pack earlier of all the valuable reprints. Honestly, uh, reprints are good, but I want to see volume of reprints. I, you know, it's nice that Tom McGorf was reprinted. It's not so nice that Tom McGorf increased in price right after its reprint because the demand increased more than the supply did. Uh, I feel that, that is a mistake. And if Wizards of the Coast wants to continue to increase packs, you know, if they increase the next set by two percent, the next set by two percent, then there better be good cards in that set so people go to your local game store. Buy, buy those fat packs, booster boxes, or they're not going to buy it. I mean, one of the most epic fails as a set I've ever seen was uh, you no know, this whole Born of the Guides, Journey to Nyx, Pharos. Like, this set did not, I, I'm pretty sure it didn't do that well. Um, there's honestly no cards in these, you know, maybe Brimaz, but like he's a maybe. Boxy's obviously was very good. Journey to Nyx, I don't know any, um, I don't know any card being heavily played in Modern or Legacy. Um, yeah, leave a comment below if you guys, I'm probably missing a few, but out of these particular one, two, and three, th this block, you're not going to sell many packs. Um, the same with, you know, the same exact relation, there's a direct relationship with how good the set is and how many good powerful cards are in the set and how much how many boxes are sold by the local game store. And there's a direct relationship between how many boxes a local game store is going to order and how many boxes they sold. And then Wizards of the Coast 
it has a direct relationship between how many boxes they sell to game stores, uh, distributors, and then how much money they make for their stockholders. Bye guys.